go to that. So this is called Who's Who in the Atomic Zoo. Woo -hoo. So I, I taught at the Los Angeles Zoo for a couple of years, and that is uh, where I came up with a lot of these zoo-based projects. So this one is uh, one that has to do with chemistry. So let's go and take a look and see how we use the zoo to learn about chemistry. All right, why isn't it going? Let's go. Okay, here we are. It says you're going to see how many names of animals you can make up using the atomic alphabet. In other words, each element in the periodic table of elements has a symbol. Like oxygen is O, like hydrogen is H, like uh, carbon is C, uh, cobalt is C, uh, capital C, little O. So you're going to take those combinations and you're going to spell names of animals. And so you're going to come up with uh, uh, 35 animals. If you get more than that, that's extra credit. Okay, that's where we're headed. Here's an example. All right. This is lithium, L-I, okay. there's oxygen, O, and there's N, nitrogen. Put it all together, what do you get? The lion, okay, so that is what we're doing. We're trying to spell names of animals using the letter combinations found in the periodic table of elements. So there's lion, here's another one. Here's beryllium and argon. Beryllium and argon give you bear. So find names in the periodic table. And there you go, lithium, oxygen, nitrogen give you lion and beryllium and argon give you bear. Got it? Okay, so uh, now that you've seen some examples, what you're gonna do is you're gonna organize these in a chart or a table, it looks like this. You've got the animal's name spelled out this way so we can see the different elements used lithium, oxygen, nitrogen, list those where it says elements used. The cage number is going to be the atomic numbers added up. The atomic number of lithium is three, oxygen is eight, nitrogen is seven. See, what you're gonna find is, look, I had a, I had a colleague who said, she was, uh, she was a chemistry teacher, and she used to say, I want you to memorize all 45, 40 elements, the first 40 elements. Oh, wow, you make them memorize the first 40 elements? I don't even know the first 40 elements. I'm a chemistry teacher. So it's just the ones that you use a lot, you're going to know. And as you do this, this project, you're going to see that the ones you lose a lot, you're going you're gonna to just know them. Okay. So these are the cage numbers or the atomic numbers and the animal's weight or the atomic weight. So the atomic weight of lithium is seven, the atomic weight of oxygen. Round it off, of course, you'll see on the periodic table, it's 15.999, that's 16. And then nitrogen is 14.007. So just call it 14, add those up, get that. And this one, this should be an 18, it, which is uh, trailed over to the, to the next line. So that's 18, three plus eight plus seven. All right, so once again, the cage numbers are made from the atomic numbers, you just add those up. And then the atomic masses make up the animal's weight. So it says here, round off all of the elements, atomic weight, to add them up, get a total, show your work. Okay. Looks good. You're going to list your 35 animals in alphabetical order on your chart. Yeah. Okay. And there are rules. So here are the rules. You cannot separate the symbols. You have to use them the way they are. Like if you have, you have a, let's see what, a cesium is a C and an S. Uh, you need a CES, not like you can split it and slip an E in there. No, 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 you're not going to do that. So you have to use the, the symbols the way they are in the periodic table of elements. Do not use animal name abbreviations like hippo or rhino, but if you can spell out hippopotamus or a rhinoceros, then you can use those. You can use common names or scientific names. Uh, you, if you want to figure out a scientific name or something, just type in the, uh, the name into uh, the, the common name into Google 
And probably the first thing comes up is a Wikipedia page that also has a sign, scientific name. You can use singular or plural, but not both because of our, lion, our, our, our example of lions, you can make a plural by sticking a sulfur, an S at the end. Nah, you can use one or the other. So um, you can use singular or plural, but you can't use both. If you can spell the, the animal name in a different way with different elements, then you are allowed to put that animal on twice. Like if you can spell bear one way with beryllium and argon, whether you spell bear with a different combination of elements, like you start with boron, which is just the letter B, well, maybe you can make it. So if you can spell the name more than one way with different elements, then do it. <coughs> um, some of you are skilled in other languages, want to use another language, then you can use those animal names also. But you got to tell me what it is in parentheses. It'd also be cool if you told me what language it was in, because some of you are um, familiar with the Espanol, but some of you are familiar with other languages as well. So if that's you, then tell me what language it's in, because I'm not, I, I only speak English. Lo siento. <coughs> okay. So those are the rules. Oh, your animal can be extinct. Got to be an animal now. Now the really long ones are dinosaurs. There are many dinosaur names that work for this project. So if you have a really long name, you could get extra credit. Not 500 points, mind you, because this project is only worth 20. Um, so probably you can get a, I say 20? I think maybe it's 50. I forgot. Take a look at schools. Take a look at Canvas and see what I put in there. Whatever it is there, I think it's 50. But you can earn an extra 10 points if you do any or all of these things. If you have the largest zoo in, the, you know, in, in all of Gorman, if you have the longest name, if you have the highest cage number, if you have extra animals. Um, I've been doing this project since I taught at the zoo, and I taught at the zoo like almost 20 years ago. But um, at the zoo, there's a, uh, someone who, who took the uh, 35, put those on one table, and did another 100 on top of that. It gets kind of addicting, like, uh, you know, like a video game or something. Ooh, I'm gonna come up with some more animals. Yeah, ah. So we came up with more than 100. Okay. <coughs> the question is, do I do it on paper or Google Doc Sheet? <coughs> or Google Doc or Google Sheet, you can do it any way you want. Um, you do it on paper uh, or you do it on a poster board. You can take a, a photo of it and then turn that in. I probably would do it on a Google Sheet though. And uh, if you want to, you could add pictures to a Google Sheet, or if you made it into a Google Doc, you could do it um, that way also. And if you have a unique presentation, that brings us to this. A unique presentation, you have a poster or a report or a mobile or a card flipping book or a PowerPoint or a Google, uh, Google slide deck. You can make a video. You can make a diagram, you can make a three-dimensional project, anything like that. Uh, yeah, Nathan, you were in my bio class, huh? <laughs> yeah, very cool. All right. So, hey, um, what, I will tell you a story real quick. One time I wrote a, an English paper on Ernest Hemingway, and I got an A on that paper. And then uh, that was... Uh, my junior year of high school, but I also was taking community college classes. So in my next two community college English classes, I turned in that same paper and I got an A each time. I've got an A plus the third time. And all I did is recopy it. Ah. So Nathan, yeah, and you know, uh, take advantage. All right, uh, what else? It's fine. Okay, this is due in two weeks, not September 3rd, just the last time I used this, that's what it was, okay? All right, so that is going backwards, 
that is uh, that is what's happening with the Atomic Zoo project. And so, um, so do you have any questions, you guys, about that project? Due in two weeks.